welcome to our paper paper friday my name is chef anna from flora cakes and today we are going to work on making paper paper flowers and specifically these ones are wedding flowers very soft and pliable and you can see these ones i made a few days ago because i wanted to show you that they still stay pliable and soft if you're using my wafer paper conditioner i'm looking at my table so i'm going to do a last a few last preparations for our demo if you're going to work with me you need wafer paper i'm using 0 0.27 terracina wafer paper this is the one i have you will need to have floral wire i have needle cakes 26 gauge white wire you need some sort of color i'm using i'm tasting this super pearl by new york cakes and i'm loving that so far so this is one of my favorite super pearl colors and you will need my acetonic and a pair of scissors so i have a few other things on my table let me know where you join me from and if you can see and you can hear me because i wanted to make sure that technologies are working i had a few issues with my technologies today but i hope it's just temporary so it's going to work hello 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 i'm, I'm looking for my v for paper conditioner qatar oh that's amazing what is the weather over there so uh let me know in the comments if you are joining me live and where you're watching from or if you're watching the replay and where you're watching from canada canada so many people are joining us from canada hello canada good morning it's still morning here, Brazil. I think it's still morning in Brazil because you're not that far from us. I'm in South Carolina and uh, it's very rainy today. So I have all my lights on. Let me turn my other light on for my big display. Um, okay, so you can see all the fi fancy things are here. Hello, hello, hello. Ohio, California. It's, it's very early in California. Thank you for joining me. From Brazil, but in Texas. Texas are our neighbors almost. Florida is our neighbors to southern Louisiana, even closer. So we have kind of like our neighbors are uh, joining us. Argentina and welcome, welcome, welcome. So if you're watching a replay or you wanted to watch a replay, fingers crossed it's going to be safe. And if you wanted to get my recipe, just comment recipe on the replay, not in the comments, so I can send you a template for these flowers and recipe for everything we are going to use. So let me tell you all the fun things about making these paper, paper flowers. So you can see these are one of my favorite flowers to me. I would say these are my statement flowers. I make them for almost every single wedding cakes for clients who wanted to save a little bit of money. Because if you took my uh, cake price in masterclass, or anything where I talk about different styles for your cakes and different pricing strategies. So in my portfolio for my clients, I make wedding cakes, I'm a wedding cake designer, and um, in my portfolio, I offer three different pricing strategy for my wedding cakes, because <laughs> I hate two things in life, cilantro and hourly wage. I have no idea how to price your creative work based on the hourly wage. And I prefer to pay myself a salary and charge, like price my cakes based on the complexity of the design. You can see new baby, so that would be a premium pricing because you can see all of them are wafer paper flowers. But something like this with texture and flowers like that, like the one we are going to do today, that would be in the second tier. So if you know how to make cakes, like maybe cover your cakes in fondant and do some basic techniques but you wanted to start making wedding cakes or you wanted to make your cakes to the next level with wafer paper flowers but you have no idea where to start these flowers are amazing way to do that and they are very easy to make so let's start with that i'll bring you down to my table let me see if we can go even even more even lower and you can see everything that's happening on my table okay fingers crossed for the technologies it's just like i'm so stressed i'm always stressed about the technologies because instagram is playing jokes on me all the time 
So for these flowers, we are going to use vapor paper and why I'm using vapor paper because vapor paper is edible. It dries very quickly and it's easy to work with if you know how to do that. So these are the flowers we are going to make today, or at least attempt at making. And first, let's start with vapor paper. For these specific techniques, for making some sort of like whimsical flowers and something that like wedding style flowers, you can use any type of vapor paper. I'm using 0.27 millimeters vapor paper by Saracina. You can use uh, any brand. I have Oasis Supply, I have Icing Images, and I think I've tried every single brand of vapor paper that's available on the market. But anything uh, single thickness, and single thickness that means that your vapor paper has two sides. You can see this side is shiny and this side is bumpy. So this side resembles a skin texture. So it's a little bit like bumpy side. And any side would work for you. My general rule how to choose which side of paper paper to use for single every single flower. If we are going to apply something like pearl color, something like I'm going to use today, I prefer to work on the shiny side as a base side. And if I'm applying my vapor paper conditioner with color to get any texture, then I prefer to work on a bumpy side because it gives me a little bit of texture without me needing to work for that texture. So I'm folding my vapor paper in thirds, like letter size, because with vapor paper, single thickness vapor paper, you can cut it three, uh, three layers at the same time. And for something like this, for the flower like this, all you need to do is to think what size of the flower you wanted to make or what size of the petal you wanted to make because when you're going to condition and shape your vapor paper it's going to shrink a little bit so the petal you're going to cut is going to be you have to cut it a little bit larger than the petal you wanted to become with so these are the petals i cut last time and when i shaped and conditioned them probably something like this so they became a little bit smaller. If you want your flowers to be on a larger scale, make sure that you cut your wafer paper appropriately and in a larger size. To cut our wafer paper, we can use a lot of different tools. We can use craft punches, something like this, if you need to cut a lot of shapes at the same time. I personally prefer to use a pair of sharp scissors and sharp like craft scissors, not your kitchen scissors, because these ones are not going to give you a result you're after. So sharp scissors, craft scissors. You can also use a cutting machine. You can use a craft knife to cut your wafer paper. So whatever works for you. But something like this. So I usually start with the larger flowers because larger petals will take the most amount of wafer paper. My wafer paper is folded in three and I cut it like a small piece. Uh, I would say five centimeters, two inches. And then I'm going to cut it again. So I'm creating like rectangular square shapes and I'm looking for my bowl for my scrubs because I collect all my scrubs for paper paper. So now I have my piece of paper paper to use as much as possible and to have as little scrubs as possible of my paper paper. I have three layers here. I'm going to keep it, hold it in the corner and cut just rounding my corners. So I'm not doing anything very fancy. I'm trying to achieve a rounded, like paddle shape shape. But basically I'm using my wafer paper as a guide. Usually when I look at my piece of wafer paper, if I wanted to shape a paddle, I look at the sharpest corner and then I just round it a little bit, creating more like a paddle shape like this. And it doesn't matter for style of flowers we are making today. It doesn't matter specifically what type you're going to get. Next strip I'm going to cut in three and this will be my starting point for my petal. So you can see I have rectangular and again I'm going to cut this into a petal shape like that. So it goes very quickly in if you're going to use the same thickness of wafer paper you can make maybe a whole branch like this or even more using one sheet of wafer paper because we are cutting so many petals out of that. 
and I'm saving my scrubs, my vapor paper scrubs, usually in a bowl or somewhere in the bag because then when I need to make my vapor paper glue, what I'm going to do is take my scrubs and add water, mix it all together and put it in the microwave to create my vapor paper glue. And vapor paper glue is, look, you can see it's, it's melted vapor paper, just basically melted vapor paper. And the reason for us to use vapor paper glue because vapor paper is not vapor paper glue is not going to melt our vapor paper petals and will give us beautiful results so it still stays flexible because i used vapor paper glue so now what we need to do is we need to condition our petals and shape our petals and i have a few petals here i'll bring my palette for my vapor paper conditioner and the easiest way to shape them is to have some sort of petal shapers. I have this rounded things. You can use different spoons. I like using bumpy foam like this. So anything that will give you a shape for your petal. And I prefer applying my wafer paper conditioner with a brush. So what I'm going to do is take my acetonic, which is a glycerin based wafer paper conditioner. If you want a recipe, it's either a link in my profile or my website, Flora Cakes. It's a free recipe. I want everyone to use it and give it a chance because I think it makes working with wafer paper so much easier. And that's the reason why my petals still soft and flexible weeks after I made them. So I made these petals like a long time ago and still you can see they are very soft and flexible but hold its shape. And that's what we are going to do today. So I'll start with my smaller petals, a few petals like this. And for my color today, you can do any color. You can use airbrush colors with vapor paper. You can use gel colors if you wanted to achieve brighter color like this. But today I wanted to make them more like a wedding style. So that's why I'm using just powder pearl color. Also, sometimes I use uh, airbrush pearl color as well. But today I'm using this and I use this the last week for my for making my vapor paper flowers and I love it so much. So I'm just mixing my pearl color. This is by New York Cakes and I try that for my vapor paper and work it's amazing. So this color is called Super Pearl. Super Pearl, yeah, right here. It says Super Pearl and it's 100% edible. So if you don't want to use any wires on your cakes, these colors or something like this is amazing to use for your flowers. So now I have my wafer paper conditioner mixed with a pearl color. You can add any shade, you can add anything you wanted to, to work with. And I'll take my paddle and again, because I wanted my paddles to be shiny, I'm going to assume that the face side of my paddle is my shiny side. So I'll take my paddle here on the table and apply my wafer paper conditioner on one side and usually because uh, for this application you don't need to be gentle you don't need to worry about your wafer paper melting we actually want our wafer paper to melt a little bit and become very soft and flexible i can work at maybe five six petals at the same time so like let's do maybe more like another large one and I'll keep them on my table for maybe a minute or two while I'm conditioning my other petals because I want these petals to become soft without me doing any work on that. So another petal here and like that. Now my first petal, the first conditioned petal became very, very soft and it's almost like it looks like it's melting but it's not. But now I can shape it and usually I do is I give it a little twist or something. So I'm giving this petal a little bit of shape and movement and maybe pinch at the end. And I'm going to place it on my bumpy foam to dry. For wafer paper, it depends on your humidity. It takes maybe 5 to 20 minutes to dry. Again, depends on how humid your room is. I only applied my wafer paper conditioner on the shiny side of my wafer paper. And I'm twisting my petals and giving them a little bit more visual interest and life. And something 
trying not to make them very very plain and um, flat so yeah, a little bit of twisting and same for our larger petals for larger petals if you worrying about your wafer paper being too dry you can apply your wafer paper conditioner on the other side as well because larger petals like this might take a little bit more effort to become soft but also I'm doing the same I'm just pinching that at the bottom and I'm shaping my petals like this and placing them on a bumpy form to dry Sometimes it depends on my humidity. Right now my humidity is 52%. I have my humidity checker here. 52%, so it's like it's a perfect humidity to work with vapor paper. So I can make a dozens of petals at the same time and work on them all together. And, but something like this for a flower like this, I'm not worrying about shaping them properly or working on them for a long period of time. If you wanted to play with your petals and make them, uh, give them like a different shape, put them in a veiner or something, now's the best time to do that when you know that your petal is soft and flexible and it has some sort of shape. So then I'll leave it aside to dry for maybe again, like 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes, while I'm working on making other petals, as many as I wanted to, and then I'll have these petals all on my table, like that, and then I'll start assembling them on my wire. So here are my petals, I let them dry on the petal shaper. Few, I made them probably a week ago because I was preparing for our demonstration today but you can see because I use my vapor paper conditioner my petals do hold its shape but they are still very very soft and flexible and textural and beautiful and I love them so much so here are my petals I made earlier this week and usually when I assemble my flowers like this I pick two petals for my first layer then two petals for my middle layer and like two or three larger ones for my next layer so usually i just assemble them by size like roughly how i see them um, developing in sizes because i want my petals my flowers to be different shapes and different sizes like for example something like this something like this something like that then we will have this visual interest when arranging our flowers on wine or arranging them together and i'll start with using my floral wire i use for something like this i will use 26 gauge wire you can use 24 but i would not suggest you to go below 24 or above 26 so 26 is perfect and make sure that you're buying a high quality floral wire that should be either paper covered or cloth covered because vapor paper doesn't want it to stick to anything that is not paper covered or what or cloth covered so I'll take a few pieces how many I need? I need two so I'll start with two pieces of 26 gauge wire and this is just a holder for my wires so you don't need to have anything specific now I have my floral wires these are 26 gauge wire cut in thirds and I'll take a pair of pliers and create a little hook on the top of my wire for my flower wire for my petals to stick so you can see these hooks are relatively small in size nothing fancy but these will allow us to attach our first petals so i have my vapor paper glue and again vapor paper glue is vapor paper melted in water and microwaved in like five second increments until it becomes this gel like consistency alternatively if you don't want it to do to make vapor paper glue even though I don't know why you wouldn't want to make a paper paper glue, you can use just water or you can use something like a piping gel. I find that I, I forgot to, to bring my brushes for my paper paper glue. And I find that paper paper glue 
does make the difference. So if you want my recipe, send me a direct message recipe and I'll send you my guide. It's free. It's free. How I'll teach you how to make paper, paper conditioner, paper, paper glue. So I'll start with two petals first. I'll take a little bit of paper, paper glue and apply that at the bottom of my petal, just like a tiniest amount possible first. And I'll take another petal as well also tiny amount of vapor paper glue. Then I will take my wire and I will sandwich my wire in between two petals like this. So you can see I have two petals like that with my vapor paper glue and I'll play with that. I'll pinch my petals on the wire making sure that I like the shape. It has some movement and these are just two petals out of all the petals we made today. Then I'll make a little hook and I'll put it upside down to dry. For me, <laughs> let me show you. I have a lamp, I have a table lamp and usually I just hang my petals like this on my table lamp. Uh, that's what you see where I'm looking. So I have different places on my table where I can hang my petals to dry. So I'll do this again. I'll take my few petals, few smaller petals and a piece of 26 gauge wire, sandwich this together and play with that, pinch this together, making sure that my wire will stay very firmly inside my flowers. And you can make these flowers with using just two petals and stop right here because it's already, you can see, it's already very delicate and beautiful the way it is. Then I'll set it aside to dry. When it dries, like maybe 15 minutes later, and my vapor paper glue is completely dry. Again, depends on your humidity. If you live in a humid climate, it might take 15 minutes. If you live in a drier climate, it probably will take maybe two minutes to dry. So I'll take two more petals. Again, apply vapor paper glue at the bottom, and I'm applying like the tiniest amount of vapor paper glue just right here and I will build my flower even more. So I have on my flower, I have my two petals growing this way and I wanted to add a little bit right here to make it more uh, circular shape. So you can see I'm pinching another petal onto this side and maybe another petal next to that. There is no science, there is no method to do that. Just make sure that when you're looking at your flowers, it becomes larger and larger in terms of proportions so uh, you like it how flat it gets so i will be playing usually i play with my petals for a little bit before making a hook and hanging it to dry upside down then when you have few more layers something like this you wanted to add larger petals you can do the same for larger petals you can add from two to four petals at the same time so i'll take three panels at first to add to this flower. So I'm taking, again, I'm applying a little bit of paper, paper glue and I'm pinching that onto my vapor paper flower. That's already been drying for maybe five, five, 10 minutes. If you're going to make a few petals, few flowers at the same time, you will work very fast because while you conditioning petals, you are uh, letting the other petals dry. So it's like the whole process. It goes very quickly when you're working on a few flowers at the same time. So I have just one conditioned petal left, one petal that is dry. I'll look at my flowers, which one, so maybe this one. Again, I'll apply a little bit of vapor paper glue and pinch that onto my vapor paper flower to make it open. So now I have a lot of beautiful wafer paper flowers here. I'll leave it to them to dry for a little bit. And even like the ones we made today, they are already ready to be assembled to so maybe I'll place them on one of our smaller flowers just to complete them and give me a little bit more visual interest. So this is another one. Let me know if you have any questions while I'm waiting for my flowers to dry for a little bit. I can answer your questions about wafer paper, working with wafer paper. If you have any questions, we have about like two to five minutes to wait until our flowers will be drying. 
I think I saw a question, but your comments are, you're just like joining, living, joining, living. Hello, hello, hello. And we are making beef for paper wedding flowers, like the easiest beef for paper wedding flowers you can make for your cakes. And they are beautiful. They look like the, the yellow cake I have with the same flowers. These are yellow flowers. So you can make them in any different colors. So hello, hello, hello. Thank you so much for doing this. Can you save this video for later? I'll try. You know, we do this Beef for Paper Fridays every single Friday. That's why they call it Beef for Paper Friday. 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, New York time. And I would highly recommend you to join live because sometimes the technologies and um, I cannot predict what is going to happen. So if you want to catch me doing these things live and all answering all your questions about Beef for Paper every single Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, here on Instagram, be for paper Fridays with Gloria Cakes, me. And uh, the next question is, do you add the pearl to your AC tonic? Yes, I mix uh, my pearl of color with my AC tonic here on my palette. So it is right here. I don't know if you can see how pearlescent this color is like this. So it's not clear, it's pearlescent because I add pearl color. If you need to make a lot of something like pearl colors, you can add your pearlescent color directly to your mixture in a bottle and then you can use it if you if you have to. I don't need to make that, so I'm just mixing in my palette. And, uh, I can ask about the liquid. What is that? Okay, let's talk about the liquid and I'll see if you have any other questions. So the liquid is, it's called acetonic, wafer paper conditioner. This is my uh, own recipe. I developed that recipe in 2017, 2018 to work with wafer paper. So it contains, it's a mixture of water and food grade glycerin. Let me grab my glycerin and let me grab my water. So glycerin is a humectant and we are using glycerin to help our vapor paper to stay soft and flexible for a long period of time. As I show you, like these flowers are at least one week old, but they are still very soft and very flexible and very lovely. And I just throw the petal. So I'm using this vapor paper conditioner and it works in any humidity. This vapor paper conditioner is perfect even if you live in high humidity or in a low humidity. So it's a mixture of food grade glycerin and water, like regular water. And if you want to buy recipe, send me a direct message recipe and I will send you the link to my vapor paper guide where you'll get the recipe for my conditioner, my vapor paper glue and all of that. So this is like the mixture of your vapor paper conditioner that you can make yourself. And have you ever tried using edible candy paper? I tried hard to work with. I have I have no idea what the edible candy paper is. I work with wafer paper and wafer paper. You can see it's like paper like edible material made out of potato starch. So this is not rice paper. This is specifically wafer paper. So I haven't tried that, unfortunately or fortunately. That's what I do. Thank you very much, Stefano, for awesome tutorials. So inspiring, so stunning. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining me today. And what is the ratio for conditioner? Send me a direct message recipe and I will send you my guide because for the recipe, but direct message, not the comment, direct message. Because for the guide, it depends if you wanted to, if you live in a high humidity or in a low humidity, it's different and I different uh, recipes. Uh, maybe sugar sheets. Maybe I, I, I'm honestly, I haven't worked with any of those things. I work with vapor paper. I love making vapor paper flowers. I have vapor paper. I think like, honestly, I think vapor, I have vapor paper flowers coming out of my ears. So I have my vapor paper flowers on my table. Vapor paper, David Austin Rose from our vapor paper academy. Vapor paper, sweet pea. Vapor paper, delphinium. Vapor paper, butterfly ranunculuses. Uh, Icelandic poppy I have here. My new obsession and my new flowers I worked last week on is wafer paper anemone. And you can make them white. I just chose to make them pink for that cake. So I have these ones and I have a lot of flowers over here, over there. So I have wafer paper flowers everywhere and I don't need to learn how to work with another material because I think wafer paper gives me uh, enough 
flexibility to make anything I want. I can make something like this, or I can make something a little bit more uh, fancy. I call them fancy. I don't know if they're fancy, but I think like, especially something like my David Austin Roses paper paper. I think it's fancy. Let's be honest. We love. I love fancy things. So I have my flowers in here. They are almost dry. And I'm going to assemble them in a branch. So these are my paper, paper flowers. And to assemble them, I'm going to use floral tape. Okay. And a few more questions. Sugar sheets. Let me see where do you leave, where do you buy the wire? This one is from New York Cakes. I'll tag them, but New York Cakes and I try their wires. This is a very high quality, so I love it. I love it. The other brand I use CK Products and PME, but these ones are the last expensive ones out of everything, and I love the quality. So these are New York Cakes wires. That's what I'm using. Twenty six gauge. Uh, I'm not sponsored. I made everything. I buy everything. I'm not sponsored. I'm just sharing my own honest opinion. Thank you so much for learning important things. Yay! Your, I love your job, inspiring a lot of people with a beautiful work. Thank you so much. That's the reason we are doing those things. Can I ask you for something because I'm a uh, back. Uh, uh, okay, you can go back and watch this from the beginning, and then we are going to assemble our flowers. So I have my flowers in here. To assemble them, I'm going to use floral tape. If you never use the floral tape to assemble your flowers or put your flowers together on a branch, I would suggest you to buy two basic colors. Why? If you're working in the wedding industry. Keep in mind, I make wedding cakes. I'm a wedding cake designer. I teach how to make wedding cakes. So everything I teach is uh, more towards the wedding cake industry than like uh, celebrational cakes. So if uh, I'm talking from my perspective, I'm talking about my experience. White color and lime green. Let me grab my lime green color. So if you're making wedding cakes or light colored cakes, these are two colors for floral tape that are the most used colors in my business for any wedding cake. So it's either lime green or white. Because a lot of brides, you would be surprised that a lot of brides prefer just white on white on white. Even for the foliage, it should be just white. So white floral tape is very important. I have this tool to cut my floral tape in half because floral tape, you can see it's about, I would say, quarter of an inch thickness. I think it's like seven millimeters, so quarter of an inch. Sometimes if you're going to assemble your floral, your flowers with a full width floral tape, it just gets a little bit too bulky. So there are different tools to cut your floral tape. I like this one. There is a little blade, like razor blade. So when you put your floral tape in here, press it down and cut it in half. I just like things like that. So this tool is called uh, florist tape and ribbon shredder. And there is a little blade over there to cut it in half. That's what I use for cutting my floral tape in half. You can use a pair of scissors. It's nothing, nothing major. But if you're working in the industry and you're making a lot of flowers, having something like a tool like that will help you a lot. And I use it almost every single time for my uh, flower, for my tape. Okay, if you have any questions, keep them for a second and I'll reply to answer them a little bit later. Let me show you how to use a floral tape. So when you take your floral tape, the floral tape on itself is not sticky. It's not going to stick to your wire. It's not going to stick to your paper paper. It's not going to stick to your... Uh, flowers. The way to activate your floral tape, you need to hold it in uh, maybe like this size distance and stretch it. So you need to make sure that your floral tape is stretched because then you will activate the sticky wax glue that holds your floral tape together. And I'll start with taping my flowers. Floral tape will not stick to anything else but itself. So what I do is I take my wafer paper flower and my floral tape, I just 
pinch it to itself. So now, now it's stuck to my nail. So you can see that when I'm pinching my floral tape on itself, it sticks. Then I'm going to hold my flower with one hand and twist. So I'm twisting towards me and then I'm pulling my floral tape very tightly with my other hand about like 45 degrees downwards. So I'm twisting my flower, this is the motion I'm doing, and I'm pulling my floral tape downwards like this and then it will overlap itself and when you get a hang of that it goes relatively quick. So that's what I'm doing bringing my floral tape down a little bit and I'll tape all my flowers. So again, I'm stretching my floral tape. I'm bringing it over uh, my base of my vapor paper flower and I'm pinching that on itself. So I'm pinching my floral tape on itself. Then I'm twisting with one hand and bringing my floral tape down with my other hand, about 45 degrees down again. Don't forget to stretch your floral tape because if you're not going to stretch it, it's not going to stick to even to itself. Stick it together. And this method works for every single way you're going to use your floral tape, whether you're taping your leaves, you're taping your arrangements, whatever you wanted to do. But I prefer to tape my flowers first before assembling them. In the branch because if you are making especially wedding flowers and your floral wire is visible it's not a very professional look so floral tape looks a little bit cleaner than just the floral wire so for example this is our flower with just floral wire no tape and this is the same flower but taped you can see it looks a little bit cleaner and it looks a little bit more professional so i prefer to use a little bit of floral tape Again, stretch and tape my flowers. And if you are uh, making a lot of flowers, something like this, you can call someone, you can watch TV, you can watch a movie. And when you know, like when you have this muscle memory and your hands remember how to do that, it doesn't take long to tape your stamps. And I do that for everything, for my leaves, for my flowers, for everything. So now I have my flowers and they are different sizes and I'm going to arrange them on a branch. To do that, usually I go by size. So I will look at the smallest flower. My smallest flower will go first, then maybe the next smallest one, then the third, fourth, the larger one and the larger one. Usually I go from the most um, close, like the younger flower to the most open and fluffier flower. You can see then you will have like kind of like a progression of the flowers uh, on your branch. I'll take my floral tape again, I stretch that and I'll start taping my first flower, but maybe a little bit down like that. Usually it depends on the size you wanted to go. If you wanted to make your flowers to look, your branches to look cohesive and beautiful, make sure that you are leaving the same size for your flower and in between your flowers. So I will go, usually I go for about maybe an inch, so two and a half centimeters. Then I'll take my second leaf, second flower, and I'll measure two and a half centimeters as well. And I'll bring it down and tape them together like that, then I'll tape for maybe another inch down, take another flower and tape them down. And you can see I hold them relatively close to each other. I'm not stretching, I'm not fixing them at this moment. I'm just assembling my branch all together, bringing my flowers. If you need to build a thicker stem or a longer stem, you can tape another wire right here and for the most part it doesn't matter what uh, color the wire would be if you have any like cheaper wi cheaper wires or maybe a wire that is like leftover from a different project and then you can tape it in right here so if you need to extend your stamp you can tape another floral wire here like that now my stamp gets a little bit longer I'll take another piece of floral tape, stretch it. Again, don't forget to stretch your floral tape. Fix it, like pinch it on itself to hold. Bring it down, put another flower here. 
And where's my last flower? And another flower. I thought it may be a little bit down here. Okay. And I'll tape everything together. So my flowers, my branch, all of them are assembled in this shape at this moment. And I'm not going to worry about the position of flowers yet. So for example, if you wanted to make your flowers, let me bring you a little bit closer. If you wanted to make your flowers in advance, because a lot of uh, people ask me if you wanted to make your wafer paper flowers in advance. So I would stop at this moment and I will put my wafer paper flowers in the storage in this way, in a uh, plastic box or something. So I'm not going to shape them before I need to use them. When I'm going to assemble my flowers on the cake, you can see floral tape as well. You can see the difference between this branch and this branch. When I'm going to assemble that on a cake, usually I look for the direction my flower wants to go, like these yellow ones. Maybe it's going to go downwards, then I need to shape my flowers differently. Maybe it's going on the side or something. But I will start with my bottom flower, like this, I will shape it. And what I'm doing is I'm pinching my wires and I'm giving my wires a little bit more movement. Then I will take my second flower and I'll shape it in a different direction. So you can see this is the back of my branch. I'm showing you the back. Then I'll take another flower and pinch it towards me. Then another flower in another direction, like that. Another flower this way. This is the back. So you can see that all my flowers are going different directions. This is the back. Then I will look from the front and maybe bend my wire either this way to create this shape or this way to create this shape. And then we will have our beautiful branch of paper, paper flowers. If you need to leave it to dry for a little bit, you can do that. But basically that's how these branches are created. Then I will probably put it on a bumpy foam or something until I need to use it or on a, in a bag. For something like this, you can put it in a bag and you can keep it in a bag for years and years and years. Wafer paper is not going to go bad and you can use it and reuse it as many times as you want it to. So that's the secret on how to make wafer paper wedding flowers. And if you have any questions, let me know. I'll take a sip of water and I answer any questions you have about working with wafer paper. Because I love working with wafer paper if you didn't figure this out yet. And if you're watching a replay and you wanted to get my recipe for the wafer paper conditioner, leave me a comment recipe and I will send it to you. Next week uh, here on Instagram for our Beaver Paper Friday, we are going to make, I think we're making Beaver Paper Sweet Peas. I forgot my, my schedule, what's, what's on my schedule. I think we're making Beaver Paper Sweet Peas next week. And that's, I'll send you a template. If you are on my email list, you'll receive a template. And if you wanted to join me, we can do this together. So the question is, how do you attach them to the cake? And to attach your wafer paper flowers to a cake, there are a few different ways. First and the easiest way is to insert them into a cake. But we are never inserting our wires into a cake. Your floral tape should be, your floral wire should be taped. And then you need to use uh, uh, bubble tea straw or... Uh, Coffee stir, let me grab one. And that's that's what I use. I use coffee stirs, these are plastic tubes that you use to stir your coffee, and then you're inserting your flour into a coffee stir like this. So you can see that all my wires are protected. I'll take my scissors and cut it on an angle. So now I have this contraption and I will answer that, insert that into my cake. So this is what I use for the most part. Also, you can use dummy cakes if you have, if you need to make a large ar arrangement with a lot of flowers and you don't want to poke a lot of holes since into your cake. Usually I prefer to use a dummy cakes 
and, and arrange my flowers. If I have like a large arrangement, like a heavy arrangement, I will use a little dummy cake to do that. There are a lot of different ways, but either coffee stirrers or dummy cake, something we never insert in plain wires into our cakes. I hope this helps. And the next question is, do you know supplies for larger A3 size sheets of paper paper, please? I don't, but I think it's very easy to glue two pieces of paper paper together. You can use a paper paper glue and apply like a thin layer and fuse your paper paper sheets together if you need to get a larger size. That's usually what I do. Uh, how we make different models of flowers. If you wanted to learn how to make different flowers, especially like a fancy flowers for wedding cakes, join my Paper Paper Academy. I teach 10 plus different flowers, including peonies, ranunculuses, David Austin roses, uh, what else? Scabiosas, Icelandic poppies, like all of those flowers you see on wedding cakes, I teach inside my wedding Beefer Paper Academy, wedding flowers for modern cakes. And uh, if you wanted to watch this replay, fingers crossed it's going to be saved. And I'll see you next Friday for another episode of Beefer Paper Friday with Floria Cakes. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Anna and I'll see you next Friday. Bye bye.